No, I'm just talking to on the, I don't even know if we're recording or not. We, oh, th- oh, great. I know I'm in trouble now. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, he, uh, Lyric had a double header starting at his six, you know. Went, you know, I, and I, I don't want to get too personal, but sometimes I hope these kids would just lose. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Now I'm talking like a pastor rather than a dad. But now if that was my kids or grandkids, I'd say, get them, sick them, you know. But anyway, we hope they have fun tonight. Well, we miss you, Dan, tonight so much. And Misty, she's back east, and it, she's driving a little uh, car called a Hellcat, if you know what that is. She, that's what they rented to her. Are you kidding me? They should have given the girl a tractor. Well, anyway, so, Chris, you're welcome to join the, in the drums department if you want. If not, enjoy yourself, relax. What, or, or, no, that's right. Your wife plays the drums. Both of you do, don't you? She do, Okay. No, 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 no. I want you to rest. No, you're fired. Man, that's the a, that's a fastest I ever hired, fired anybody. Yeah, this service isn't going real well tonight. Anyway, do you love the Lord tonight? You know what we need in the church is we just need a smile every now and then for sure. We need some joy. And uh, we are blessed, so you're welcome to stay afterwards. I think we've got Travis is going to be coming back after a while to help with the fire. Fire, fireworks, and uh, we, we've got a few of them, so we do start our uh, fireworks booth, I think, tomorrow. Uh, we're not doing it today or yesterday because we just, you know, uh, I guess they don't make anything. I don't know. So anyway, we'll, we'll burn up a few dollars tonight, just pull out a 20, light it on fire, and call it a day. Because, <laughs> well, hey, we, we got a package back there that costs seven, six, seven hundred dollars So if we have any hands in the air, it's yours. I'm just telling you right now, you can walk out of here with that beast right tonight. Well, anyway, if you would, just remain standing. We're going to open with prayer. Can we do that? <clears throat> Sister Anna, I'll give you that mic. Should I read back to you? Yes. volunteered so there you are heavenly father we're thankful for the opportunity to be in your house tonight lord god to just worship you we want to worship you in spirit and in truth and lord we just love you and praise you and god we just ask that your presence just fall here tonight we pray oh lord that you would bless everyone that made an effort to come out and lord we just pray that your perfect will be accomplished lord jesus and all that is done tonight, we pray in Jesus' name. How many know that God is good tonight? Amen. Amen. Let me turn this gadget on here. Amen. This church, you're learning that I am not, I am technically challenged. Amen. God is good. We're going to go back a few years. I mean, I could sing all that fancy stuff like they do, but, you know, we're going to do something. Now, if you can't hear Sister Anna while I'm singing, you raise your hand, and, and, and the ladies in the back can get that straightened out, all right? I'm just saying. Well, God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in my heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, His light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. If you're walking through the valley and there are shadows all around, do not fear, He will guide you, He will keep you safe and sound. He has promised to never leave you nor forsake you and his word is true my god is good with all the time he put a song of praise in this heart of mine my god is good all the time through the darkest night his light will shine god is good god is good all the time we were sinners well we were sinners so unworthy 
still for us he chose to die filled us with his holy spirit now we can stand and testify that his love is everlasting and his mercy they will never end my god is good all the time he put a song of praise in this heart of mine my god is good all the time through the darkest night his light will shine god is good my god is good all the time well give him a praise Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you love the Lord? I love the Lord tonight. You've been so good to me. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. Well, I'm so glad you're in my life. And I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave. From the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. And Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. Oh, yes. Well, I'm so glad you came to save her. You came from heaven to earth. To show the way from the cross to the grave, to the dead to pay, from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross, our dead to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Oh, Lord, I lift your name on high. You came. Oh, from heaven to earth to show, to show the way. From the earth to the cross, oh, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Yes, I do, Lord. Yes, I do, Lord. Amen. Oh, Lord, I lift your name on high. Hallelujah. Because of who you are, I'm going to give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. 
Lord, I worship you, oh, because of who you are, because of who you are, because of who you are, I give you glory, oh, because of who you are, I give you praise, I give you all my praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you, oh, because of who you are. Lord, I worship you, oh, because of who you are. Oh, yeah, here we go. Oh, Jehovah Jireh, oh, my provider, Jehovah Nisi, Lord, you reign in victory, Jehovah Shalom, you're my prince of peace, and I worship you because of who you are. Oh, and I worship you, oh, because of who you are. Oh, Jehovah Jireh, oh, yes, my provider, over Nisi. Lord, you reign in victory, Jehovah Shalom. Yes, you're my peace. Prince of peace, and I worship you, oh, because of who you are. Lord, I worship you, oh, because of who you are. Worship you because of who you are. Hallelujah. 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 <clears throat> I know you know this next one. I was raised on this chorus. <laughs> As I walk through the door, I sensed his presence. And I knew this was, oh, the place where love abounds. For oh, this is a temple, Jehovah, O oh God Almighty. Oh, and we are standing, come on, help me, in His presence on holy ground. Hallelujah. And we are standing on holy ground. And I know oh, that there are angels all around. Pray, oh Jesus, now we are standing in his presence on holy ground. Oh, in 
his presence. Come on, church. There is joy, oh, beyond measure. And at his feet, peace of mind can still be found. Well, if you have a need, I said, I know my God will answer. Yes, reach out and claim it. Oh, child, you're standing on holy ground. Oh, unholy ground. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Oh, and I know that there are angels all around. Oh, let us pray. now hallelujah we standing in his presence on holy ground because he lives I can face tomorrow. Oh, yes. Because he lives. All my fears are gone. Oh, and see, I know. Yes, Lord, I know. He holds it all. And life is worth the living just because he lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Every day you're so good to me, Lord. Can we do one more, Pastor? Can we do one more? Just one more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God is so good tonight. We're going to do one called Peace of God Cover Me. I think the ladies have it on the overhead. Brother Mark Conlon, I believe, wrote this song one night several years ago. He said he was just laying in bed. He was a worship leader. He may still be. And he said, man, he said, I was going through some mental problems. He said, just facing some real struggles. And he said, I begin to lay there. And he said, I just begin to talk to the Lord about peace. I said, man, God, I need some peace in my mind. I need some peace in my heart. I need some peace in my spirit. I need some peace in my family. I mean, no, we need peace in America. My God in heaven. This place is, this is but, but he's still, Jesus is still the Prince of Peace. And he's still willing to give all the peace that we ever need, no matter what we're facing or whatever situation. Hallelujah. Peace of God. Cover me, cover me, cover me, peace of God, cover me through the storm, cover me. 
Deliver me. Let's do that again. Peace of Let that be your prayer. Cover me. Cover me. Cover me. Peace of God. Cover me. Through the storm. Cover me. I like this right here. Oh, come me and see. Holy in you, I'm secure. There it is. Holy in you, I find peace. So cover me. Cover me, cover me when I am hurting, cover me when I'm not strong, yeah, cover me when I am going through the storm, cover me when all seems hopeless, cover me when my faith is gone. Let the peace that passes all I understand. <clears throat> Cover me. Cover me. Cover me when I am hurting. Cover me when I'm not strong. Yes. Cover me when I am going through the storm. Well, cover me when all seems hopeless. Cover me when my faith is gone. Let the peace that passes all I understand. Cover me. Give him a praise tonight, church. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen, Pastor. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor, for covering for me right there at that moment. You never know what's going around. And when we get sensitive enough to know and to look, we'll know. For those of you that saw my relatives come in earlier, they're hurting. And the covering that we sang tonight, that covering that we have, you know, it's all about when someone comes in, invited, and there's a covering in the house, they're walking on holy ground. They may not realize it. They may not understand the whole thing behind that. But they came in here and they walked into a holy presence of God. Praying for my family. The young man says he's uh, having issues believing in God. So he left. I hadn't seen him in 10 years so or so, so. It, I felt compelled to go after them outside. The Holy Spirit said, go after them. And we went out there, me and the wife, and we were able to lead her to the Lord. And you can know, you can know when somebody is, is sincerely asking Christ in their life, when they begin to weep out and the, the cleansing begins to happen. And I prayed over her whole family, the covering of God, the covenant, and, and I went on and on and on of what the Holy Spirit was directing me and the wife. And I know that I know that she didn't come, didn't come here today in vain. I know that. I mean, I wish she would have stayed, but they got a taste of what it feels like when you walk on holy ground. And I want to encourage each and every one of you for being here tonight. We are all in that same presence of the Lord. 
Thank you, Pastor. That was a great, great worship time. Some of our leaders are out, and Dan's out, and that's okay. There's stuff going on left and right here at Victory Chapel. There's stuff going on in the scene and the unseen, and, and tonight you'll see a lot of that when the fireworks go off. But I want, I want to just ask Celeste to come and, and let the Holy Spirit guide her in a way that I, I know that God put a word in her heart for us. So let's give it up for her. In Jesus' name, come on. had a request to be louder tonight anyway so hey I think this is gonna work are we uh are we good can everybody hear me can you hear me can you hear me you're, you're good I don't think she can <laughs> well we will um we will do our best tonight oh, let me turn my bible right side up that would help uh so <laughs> man Man alive, I am I am glad to be here tonight, and uh, I have to tell you, uh, we're just gonna see where what the Lord does, um, and uh, we're gonna take our reading tonight from the grand old book of Deuteronomy. <laughs> when was the last time you were in Deuteronomy? Man, boy, it seems forever. Anyway, we're gonna we're gonna go back there, and uh, Deuteronomy chapter one, and. Um, I may or may not read out of the English Standard Version, but uh, I'm keeping it old school tonight. I'm reading out of King James Version, my mama's Bible. And um, let me get over to my notes. <laughs> hey, so real quick, show of hands. Um, I, I don't know how many of you were here last time I spoke, but I think I recall giving you a little bit of homework, or at least alluding to it, because we talked about level two listening. Does anybody remember that? How many of you actually tried it? <laughs> I, feel, I see people like avoiding my gaze. Okay, cool. But you tried it. What did you think? <laughs> it's hard. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Man, it takes it takes some practice, right? and some concentration and more than a little bit of patience to really set yourself aside and go, I'm all in for this person and what they're communicating to me, no matter what I feel, what my opinions are, doesn't matter if I think they're right or wrong, I'm in it for them and I'm going to listen with an open heart. That's, that's tough stuff. But you know, it's a funny thing, God does it for us all the time. All the time, all the time. He's, he, uh, he says, come to me, ye who are weary, and heavy laden, and I will give you rest, right? And that doesn't happen without him having an open heart to hear what we have to say. We have to be sure that we're having an open heart in return. Level two listening. Anyway, so we're in the book of Deuteronomy, and I'm just going to recap uh, um, verses 1 through 19, just a really, really quick skimming through, so just you don't have to read it. So Moses basically says, hey, uh, we need a recap of the events so far. <laughs> That's pretty much how we start chapter 1 in Deuteronomy. And he, said, um, he sets up a chain of command for judges. Uh, he says, you guys have grown. And I can number the stars here. You've increased tenfold and, and all that stuff. And he's, he's proud of the people that are before him. But he says, dude, I cannot listen to all of you at one time. So we're going we're gonna to set up judges. We're going to set up a command system. We're going to have, you know, certain people over this number of people. We're going to break that down, judges over these areas, and then we're going to break it down and keep breaking it down until all matters can be heard, which I thought was fun. Uh, 
And you know, it was it was funny. One thing that I that I was uh, thinking about uh, in verses one through nineteen, uh, verses sixteen and seventeen. Let me read that really fast. It says, I charge you, judges, at that time, saying, "Hear the causes between your brethren, and judge rightly between every man and his brother, and the stranger that is with him." You shall not respect persons in judgment, but you shall hear the small as well as the great. You shall not be afraid of the face of man, for the judgment is God's, and the cause that is too hard for you, bring it unto me, and I will hear it. And sometimes I don't think we understand that that's that's kind of how our system is, is based. When we come before a judge, it doesn't matter how small, or it shouldn't matter how small or how great the issue is. Everybody needs to be heard. God's intention for us to relate to one another is that all would be heard and heard fairly. He's no respecter of person, and he doesn't expect us to be either. He wants us to behave lovingly towards one another, considering our brother. Man, there's a lot of relational stuff back here in Deuteronomy and in the law. It's all about how we relate to one another uh, because our relationships with one another are absolutely precious. They're, they're what gets us through the day. If you don't have a relationship with somebody, you're poorer for it. I would say that you're not, you know, experiencing the fullness of what God intended for his community. When he created man and woman, he put them in the garden together, and he expected them to have a relationship. I don't, this isn't in my notes, but that doesn't matter. Okay, well, just go with it. So he's expecting them to form a relationship, a proper relationship that demonstrates his love for us is how they're supposed to relate to one another. Sometimes that gets a little lost. Sometimes we don't want to relate to one another. Sometimes we just want to relate to us and ourselves and our own brain, and things can get a little sticky in there. We need, we need each other's input. I need you As much as you need me, we need to exhort one another, correct one another, love on one another, encourage one another. Anyway, okay, I'm off that soapbox. Uh, So we're going to go to Deuteronomy uh, verse 20. We're going to just we're just going to skip all the way to verse 20. And um, yeah, let's just let's just dig in. We'll we'll see where it goes. He said, and I said unto you. So after all that, after all that, so we did our little recap. He says, look, I'm just going to tell you where we're at. And by the way, they were at the end, almost the end of their 40th year wandering in the wilderness. This is right before they're getting ready to go into the promised land right here. He's like, hold on, hold on, hold on. We just need to wait, and I need to have a monologue here really quick at the end of the movie. Before the, before the absolute climax, before we get the, ah, and we're riding off into the sunset, right? I got to do a quick recap, right? Because that's what the hero of the story always does. He does a recap. God told him to do the recap, by the way. And uh, so he does all of that. So they conquered a few places. Uh, They avoided others. God instructed them to conquer certain peoples. Then he said, hey, you leave these guys over here alone. They're intended for something else. Don't touch them. In fact, don't even go a foot into their territory. Not even a foot. Don't do it. Anyway, so we're past that. But starting in verse 20, he said, I said unto you, you are come unto the mountain of the Amorites, which the Lord our God doth give unto us. Behold, the Lord thy God hath set the land before thee. Go up and possess it, as the Lord God of of thy fathers hath said unto thee. Fear not, neither be discouraged. So he's telling him, hey, I give you instructions. I'm going to tell you, go possess the land. You've wandered for 40 years. Okay, fine. We're moving on from this mountain. Now I want you to cross over the Jordan. You're going to go possess the land, right? And you came near unto me, every one of you, and said, We will send men before us, and they they shall search out the land and bring us word again by what way we must go up and into what cities we shall come. Okay, let's stop right here. Let's stop. How many of you know that when you start bringing in your own judges into the middle of what God's instructed you to do, it is not going to end well for you? We're going to bring our own men (laughs) <laughs> and see what the direct, now, you gave us specific instructions. That's cool. Thanks, God. We appreciate you. You're awesome. But we're going to bring in our own judges. They're going to tell us how we need to proceed from here. Yikes. Oh, do we do that? Oh, I know I do. And so I just want to let you know, just a side note real quick. 
I'm up here preaching to myself. You just happen to be here. Okay. Let's just, okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preach to myself. You just sit there, and, and if you glean something, that's awesome. But I, I'm talking to myself here. He said, every one of you, you came unto me, and you said, we need to send our own people out because they're going to instruct us. And the same pleased me well. And I took 12 men of you, one from every tribe. He said, hey, I went along with it. Absolutely. One from each tribe. And they turned and went up into the mountain and came into the valley of Eshkol and searched it out. By the way, if I get these words wrong, please don't laugh at me. Thank you. And they took of the fruit of the land in their hands and they brought it down unto us and brought us word again and said, it is good land which the Lord our God hath given us. Notwithstanding, you would not go up, but rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God, and you murmured in your tents. Everybody say, murmured in your tents. Mm. How many of us will put on a smile somewhere and then go home and complain about it? And said, because the Lord hated us, he hath brought us forth out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. What? God hated us so much. He rescued us from those wonderful Egyptians. We were so happy there, and our lives were taken care of, and we were supplied every need. And we weren't abused at all. I, that's not how I remember it, at least. We were blessed, and we had every good thing, right? Please. They hated it there. But you know what? Sometimes when you're faced with your worst fear or insecurity, you can't help but see the blessings of your bondage. Yikes. I don't, I don't, I don't, oh, I'll, I'll go on. Okay. I, I could get lost in that one. That's okay. And you murmured in your tents, because the Lord hated us, he hath brought us forth out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. Whither shall we go up? Our brethren have discouraged our hearts, saying the people is greater and taller than we are, and the cities are great and walled up in heaven. And moreover, we have seen the sons of the Anakims there. Then I said to you, dread not, neither be afraid of them. The Lord your God, which goeth before you, he shall fight for you according to all that he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. And in the wilderness, where thou hast seen how the Lord thy God bare thee, as a man doth bear his own son, in all the way that you went, until you came into this place. Yet in this thing you did not believe the Lord your God. This is basically, it's a statement against them. It's an accusation. It's an acknowledgment of their rebellion here. Who went in the way before you to search you out in a place to pitch your tents in, in a fire by night to show you by what you should do and go, and in a cloud by day? And the Lord heard the voice of your words and was wroth and swear, saying, Surely there shall not be one of these men of this evil generation see that good land which I swore to give you and your fathers. Save Caleb, the son of... Jephun nay, he shall see it, and to him I will give the land that he hath trodden upon, and to his children, because he hath wholly followed the Lord. Also the Lord was angry with me for your sake, saying, Thou also shalt not go in thither. But Joshua the son of Nun, which standeth before thee, he shall go in thither. Encourage him, for he shall cause Israel to inherit it. Moreover, your little ones, which you said you should be prey, and your children, which in that day hath no knowledge in between good and evil, and they shall go in thither, and unto them will I give it, and they shall possess it. But as for you, turn you and take your journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. Now we're going to stop right there, and there's more to this story. He, he goes back through and he recaps everything in detail, because that's how the Hebrews did it. That's their story storytelling pattern. They tell everything in circles. They get the big picture, and then they circle back around with a little more detail and a little more detail and a little more detail. It's circular. That's how they, still t they tell their stories. But there's a couple things that I want to point out in this. And it, I don't know, it's just, honestly, I've, I don't think I ever read this passage completely and put it all together before in my entire life. I've never read the Bible from cover to cover. I'm sorry. I just, I haven't. But uh, the Lord said, hey, go over to Deuteronomy, and I went to Deuteronomy, so this is where we landed. Um, now I want to ask a couple questions here. So we've got, we've got a whole mess of people who have gone uh, a generation in the wilderness, 
We've had lots of babies born. These guys have been blessed beyond measure, even coming out of Egypt. In the middle of all of their travels and all their wanderings, they've been blessed and blessed, and God has prospered them richly and greatly and given unto them. I'm not just supplied their food, their clothes. I mean, their shoes didn't even wear out. Thank God for, you know, no DSW in the middle of a desert. Their shoes did not wear out, right? They had money. They had people to trade with. They had an abundance of water. Jesus followed them as a rock in the desert, and he supplied everything. They had nothing to complain about, yet here they were. And maybe we find ourselves in that place, too. But what effect did the past have on their present decision not to trust the word of the Lord? Hmm. Okay, let's think about that for a second. So God tells them, hey, you've done your 40 years almost and wandering in the wilderness, and I'm telling you, on the other side of the Jordan, you're going to take possession. This is the land that I promised your fathers. It's time. And they're going, wait, 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 wait. This is not, this isn't, this isn't the way I planned it. When, when you said you were going to deliver us and we were going to go through all of this stuff, this isn't what I envisioned. In fact, uh, we've been doing a study in the book of, um, the book of Exodus uh, for the past little while. And one of the things that keeps coming back to me is God can give you a word of deliverance, Right? He can give you a word of deliverance, and I don't know what we expect sometimes, but it's almost like we go, okay, so he spoke the word, and now magically it's just going to happen, and there's not going to be any tension in the transition at all. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy this change. <laughs> that we, we somehow expect that everything is going to go just the way we envisioned it. Case in point, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to myself for a second. So... I'm in real estate. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Anyway, I'm studying civil engineering right now. And in my desire to study civil engineering, I'm going back to school. I want to get my associate's degree. I'm very excited. But I was saying, Lord, wouldn't it be grand if I had another position that kind of gets me more in that direction? Because real estate's fun and all, but that's not really where I want to be. I want to be studying civil engineering. So could you supply me with a job that uh, is more in line with my major and gets me off of my hindquarters so that I'm not as sedentary. I'm tired of sitting all the time. And gets me in the direction of maybe something dealing with CAD and design and drafting and all of that stuff and, and kind of works with my schedule. Now, okay, so this, this is like, you're, you're going, wow, that's like the perfect prayer, right? <laughs> awesome. Okay, cool. So I went ahead and I put in all these applications. You know, I did the whole LinkedIn thing, looking for a job. Woohoo! You know, I'm expecting something to pop up the first week. It didn't. I must have put in, you know, like apply. You hit apply, right? After a while, it's just wrote. You're just like, yeah, sure. You want me to walk your dog? I'll apply for that. I don't care. You know, you're just, you're applying for everything. So I went ahead and did that, and I got one call back, just one. And there was this lady, Sandy. She goes, so would you be interested in coming and interviewing for us? We have this position, um, and it's really unique, and we just want to know what you think about it. And hey, uh, by the way, what made you apply for the position that we put out there? It's basically um, a technician for Corporate Design Group, which is CDG. That's the company I work for now. And she goes, what, what made you hit apply? And I said, honestly, I just hit apply. <laughs> it was there was no, literally nothing that drew me to you. I don't even know anything about the company. Just being totally honest, I put in like a, you know, a billion applications. I just hit apply. And she goes, OK, thanks for the honesty. That's cool. Are you still interested in coming in and seeing us? I said, absolutely. Let's do this. So I went in there, and they're like, so we have this job. And basically, you're working your own hours. I'm like, woo <laughs> cha-ching. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> and she goes, and what you're doing is you're using this uh, draw system. You're using a laser to map out the dimensions of buildings. I'm like, Woo, box checked. And you're going to be, you know, you, you walk the perimeter of, of buildings. You know, you're not sitting down. It's a very active job. Yes, that's checked. And um, so, yeah, what do, you, what do you think? And I went, yeah, I can do that. Sure. Let's, 
let's do that. Okay, awesome. So um, I had chaplaincy going on. Uh, I was I'm doing a I was doing an academy for Placer County, uh, uh, the Placer County Sheriff's Department. So I'm going to be a chaplain through Placer County. Um, so I had that going on. Uh, I had I was taking three classes at Sierra College all at the same time, two drafting classes and then one engineering class. No, one math class, an engineering class, drafting class, math class. And then uh, all of a sudden I have a new job, which checks all the boxes. And they said, hey, can you go to Canada for 10 days? Sure. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Let's do that. <laughs> I'll just throw it on. Yay. And so I went ahead and did all of it. So all of this stuff is converging at the same time. And I think I probably almost had a nervous breakdown. Hmm. Um, but God got me through it, came home with the Canadian version of COVID. Thank you, Lord. It was nice and polite and very easy on me. Um, it was awesome. I was over it in like three days. I was like, wow, if I could get COVID like that every single time, that'd be fabulous. So I came home with that, and I had really great expectations. I had gone through 10 days of really intense training, and um, <laughs> I, thought I, I thought I had it all together, right? And then it comes down to practical application. And so they want me to actually go measure a building now. <laughs> what, you mean I actually have to do what I'm trained for? What, wait. And something happened, and my brain went, uh-uh, <laughs> this isn't working. <laughs> and, you know, the technology wasn't working the way I thought it should, and there was still stuff to learn. And I'm like, what? You mean I don't know everything all at once right now? That's stupid. And I'm going, God, this isn't what I asked for. <laughs> He's going, literally, it's everything you asked for. <laughs> what are you talking about? So my point with that is, there's going to be some adjustment, and you may cry in the middle of it, which I have twice, and that's okay, because God's deliverance comes with an understanding that you are dependent on him in the middle of the deliverance. You are not dependent on yourself. If, if his promise came with the understanding that you were going to be completely receiving all of the glory for it, well, it wouldn't really be his deliverance, would it? Oh, I hate that. I hate it when I don't get to be in charge, and I hate it when I don't understand something. I really hate it when I don't understand technology. That drives me nuts more than anything. <laughs> that will crack me up faster than anything. <laughs> I, will, I will freak out on you. Well, you mean I don't get this computer program? What? I got this tattoo for nothing? Anyway, so, <laughs> no, serious, okay? That's a cylindrical coordinate system. We'll talk about it later. I love CAD. I love all things measuring. I'm a nerd, but whatever. But there's something that happens. God says, hey, you're still my kid, and I'm going to take care of you. You are my child, and you're going to rely on me, by the way. <laughs> oh, man. You're, are you going through an Exodus time where God has promised something, and you're like, but wait, that's not really, that's not the way I envisioned it, because I'm going through an Exodus time. And by the way, Weird, weird thing. This is not a joyful thing. I'm not rejoicing in this at all. But my boss from real estate, the head broker, precious man, uh, 72 years old, passed away a couple Saturdays ago. Just up and had a heart attack. Or no, stroke. Had a stroke. And so it's like God's closing doors. And he's saying, hey, we're not going back. <laughs> You don't get to go back to Egypt. As much as you think you enjoyed all that stress and drama, constant worrying, stomach aches, uh, headaches, all of it, everything that went along with that, you're still looking back and thinking that's better than what you got right now, even though I'm in the middle of delivering you. And I'm going, oh, Jesus, please. <laughs> you know, why are you closing doors? Why can't I go back to Egypt? Anyway, yeah, uh, so great, great stuff right there. But what effect did the past have on their present way of thinking? Oh, man. They were thinking defeatist thoughts. And, and by the way, if, you're, if you're, I don't, you're not taking notes, but if you were, the title of this is Defeatism, It's a Killer. <laughs> They're thinking, I had it so good, and I, I want to go back, and I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want the struggle. I don't want to go forward. I don't want the struggle. I don't like the fear. I don't like the report that they've brought back, by the way. These guys are big. They're big. 
okay, great, but you've got, you know, grapes the size of, what, <laughs> grapefruits? <laughs> Something like that. I mean, they were bringing back fruit that was massive and abundant, and the land was fertile, and it was just amazing, and all these promises are like, dude, God has given us the best of it, and oh, by the way, there happened to be giants there. Okay, we'll put a pin in that. We'll come back to that, because that was funny for me. Um, there may be things and circumstances and past bondage and securities um, that we lay at the feet of others. And, and what I mean by that, somewhere down the line in verse, where was it? Uh, verse, in the land, they were talking about their children. Verse 39. So one of the accusations that they brought before Moses is they said, hey, our children, our children are going to be basically food for the enemy. They're going to be made a mockery of. They're going to be sacrificed. They're going to be, they're going to be nothing. And then they're not smart enough. And they're not strong enough to go through this. And they're not. They're not. They're not. They're not. And what kind of insecurities were they taking from their own selves and their own feelings and passing that on to their children? And they're 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 basically saying, "Hey, I don't feel secure enough in in who you are." And my children definitely don't know you, and they're not secure enough, so, you know, we can't have them sacrifice to whatever you're going to bring at them. It's not going to work. And so what did God do? God said, well, hey, guess what? You're all going to die out, and you're not going into the promised land, but I'm going to give it to your children, who you think aren't capable, who you think aren't smart enough and aren't strong enough. But guess what? I'm going with them. They're going to be just fine. For me... I'm looking at that, and I'm going, as a parent, spiritually and physically, what kind of insecurities do I put on my children? Because maybe I feel like I can't do something, but God's saying, hey, stop it. Each generation gets just a little bit better, a little bit stronger. They know me just a little bit more. Whether you're aware of it or not, I'm going to lead them into my promise. Stop it. Stop it. Stop putting your insecurities on your kids. And I went, oh, okay. Okay. I don't get to be that mom anymore as much as I want to be a helicopter mom and worry about every single little thing. My kids are going to be just fine because God's in control. He's going to lead them where he needs them to go, and they're going to be blessed beyond measure because they're not, they're not too smart for their own for their own good, going, you know what, I, I know everything. You know, sometimes you have to be a child to be led into the ways of God. You have to, he said, what, come unto me. Or no, uh, unless you are, as a child, you can't see the kingdom of God. Some of us have gotten too old spiritually. Not, not old, as in I've been with the Lord for 20 years. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you've gotten crotchety and set in your ways, thinking God only moves one way. And God's saying, hey, I need you to shut down everything that you've been thinking because I, I want you to be a child. I just want you to trust me. Just trust me. I got you. That's a, that's, a, that's a simple kind of faith, and yet that's what God is requiring of us. We overcomplicate it so often. I don't, I don't want to be that person. I don't, I don't want to be that How many times does our own disobedience lead to partial deliverance? So we've got our own insecurities passed on to the next generation. That's bad. But how many of us are almost delivered? Almost there. Not quite, almost. God gives you a word, and he says, hey, here's my way. Walk in it. I'm going to deliver you completely. And you go... Mm, no, I think I'm just going to stop right here. <laughs> You're almost there. He's looking, at, he's looking at the journey you have, literally less than a day's drive from, from point A to point B, and he's going, okay, yeah, I delivered you through 40 years almost, and you're going to stop? You're almost there. You're almost done. You've almost run the race. You've almost, you've almost reached whatever it is that I was leading you into, you've almost, you've almost hit it, and, and suddenly you're going to stop, and you're going to sit down and tell me you know better? I don't want to walk in partial deliverance. Oh, 
I don't want to just get to the edge of the Jordan. I want to cross over. I want to keep going. I want to press past it. Amen? Mm. No wonder God got so fed up and so angry. No wonder he was so incredibly ticked off at these people. He goes, I can't work with this generation. You're going to have to die. I love you, but you're going to have to die. It's not going to work. Because if you drag that sorry attitude across the river, it's going to be the same thing over again, and we're going to have to walk another freaking 40 years, right? Sorry, I don't, I don't so, if it's freaking, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> wash my mouth out with soap later. Um, I don't want to go another 40 years in this. I don't know how many times God would take them to a mountain, and he said, hey, you stayed at this mountain long enough, let's move on. Well, they were here. And he said, hey, you've been here long enough. Let's move on. And they said no. Okay? Uh, verse 22. Yeah, we already went over that, so I'm not going to worry about that. Um, I think that's it. <laughs> Oddly enough, I really honestly think that's it. Um, I, I didn't get past any of, of that, I think. I think that's it. Let's walk in the deliverance of the Lord. Let's allow him to lead us past what we think <laughs> is our stopping point. Guys, God's got so much more. He wants to take you past it. He wants to take you past this struggle, whatever it is. I don't, I, mine happens to be what I'm dealing with. I don't know what yours is. But let's, let's stop looking back. Let's stop casting our doubts on people around us. And let's stop sitting down in, in the middle of our deliverance. I think that's it. That's it. That's, that's what's here. In, in Moses' recap, <laughs> thank God. Thank God God had him go back in and say, hey, let's talk about it just for a second. Let's throw it all into, you know, just one book. Let's, let's discuss this really in detail, how much you're messing around. So, um... I, Pastor, literally, that's all I have. Pastor Fred. I, I, I man, what a word. I, I truly believe the Lord is calling us to cross over. And what I mean by that is, let's stand up before we get delivered out of this place. And let's get deliverance. I'm going I'm to ask that you all come to the altar before.